Ladies and gentlemen, let's for Gaming Citadel video. The Titan Black's specifications have finally been confirmed from NVIDIA. And it is pretty much what we expected the car to be, to be honest. It's nothing super exciting. The Titan Black features exactly the same amount of stream processors, textures, units, and ROPs as the uh, 780 tie so that would be 2880 240 and 48 respectively of streams textures and drops it has a very slight core clock increase from uh, 875 reference to 889 and 928 for the boost to 980 but memory clock and bus width are the same so that's 7 gigahertz of 384 a bit respectively so what exactly is the change here why would you want to go for the titan blank well first of all it's going to be a minimum of at least 250 uh, pounds more expensive possibly considerably more there are a couple of reasons however to go for the titan black the first is it has double the amount of video memory it has six rather than three gigabytes now as i discussed in my uh, gtx 780 tie review um, one of the primary reasons or the only major concern at the moment with that card is if you're going like for example dual or tri crossfire so how this basically works is if you're going with like ludicrously high resolutions, primarily 1440p, for example, with lots of anti-aliasing, or more realistically, 4K, you could possibly start to run into VRAM issues with the uh, GTX 780, simply because it just doesn't have enough memory. Um, having said that, looking over at Crisis 3 with FXAA at 1440p, the average was about 1.9 gigs of RAM. So certainly, you know, that's absolutely fine. So my point being, with the GTX Titan, for those who money isn't really an object, um, then you can certainly go with ludicrously high resolutions, with ludicrous amounts of anti-aliasing, and you'll certainly have the memory for it. I suppose technically it's more future-proof, but... I personally don't really like the term future-proof when it comes to graphics cards because let's just be completely and utterly honest, in a year's time, two years time, we're going to have the, probably the new Maxwells out, maybe even the 20NM versions of them, and we're certainly going to have AMD's answers as well, so by that time the Titan technology is going to be pretty old anyway, therefore I don't really like the term future-proof of graphics cards, so I think for now the memory is going to be okay unless you're going to be playing in very high resolutions. So the primary reason for this is the FP64. Now, floating point 64, in other words, compute, means that for those of you who are working on a lot of uh, computational uh, applications as well, uh, we'll have to see what the exact results are for like Bitcoin mining, that type of thing. But for those who are considering that type of path and maybe dual using that with as traditional graphics card for, say, PC gaming, then, you know, the Titan looks a pretty damn good deal. Um, so this means that you're having like one third of the card's FP32 performance, which is considerably better of the 124th of the GTX 780 tights. Now, I would really like to point out, of course, that for gaming, this doesn't make any difference. But not everyone just uses their card for gaming. Now, the clock speed increases over the tie aren't really that much of a big deal. Simply because right now you can easily get non reference ties or even just overclock a reference design tie way, way, way above this. You can get boost clocks of like 1100, 1200, 1300 megahertz. So, to be honest, the rather titchy increase in the core clock isn't the reason to cough up the money. It would primarily be if you're going to be playing in ludicrous high resolutions and you're planning to SLI, one card is not going to really be able to max out the um, VRAM in terms of compute performance. In other words, to put it a simpler way, you won't have the GPU pixel pushing power to run the resolutions with the well, with the levels of anti-aliasing that you'd need to start running out of VRAM. So, for example, if you were to run MSAA times 8, for example, at 1440p or something like that, on a single Titan blank, 
yeah, you're probably going to push past the three gigabytes of RAM, particularly if you're playing something like Crisis Free or a game with high resolution texture packs. But obviously, there is that situation where, you know, will the Titan Black even be able to push it? However, texture packs can, particularly with games like Skyrim, certainly start pushing up VRAM usage, so there is that consideration. If you are, for example, heavily into modding your games, there is possibly the uh, reason to go with the Titan Black then. Nevertheless, I think it's a great card. I'm not saying it's necessarily uh, a bad card. It's a very good card. I'm just simply pointing out that for many in the high end, um, the the tie or the 780 standard is set, or even the R9 or, or uh, 290 or the 290X are probably going to be the card that a lot of people opt for. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a fairly brief one. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.